Days Project. 1925 Maxwell. The teeth on the flywheel are chewed up. We can't use the starter to start it. They crank it by hand. It's about the only way to get it started. And I found a flywheel for it from a guy at a Lincoln Continental or, or a Lincoln car show. It's got a couple of these laying around. And then also it's got a busted motor mount. The motor mount is a spring. Well, the first way I'm going to tackle this is I want to get the tranny out. I've already started. Uh, the first piece I pulled out is the bottom floorboard. It's got a little hole pull it up. It's where your battery is and all that anyway. So I've got a couple screws to take out here and then I'll have complete access to the all housing bolts and we can get this uh, transmission out and on the ground. Okay, floorboards out of the way. Looks pretty simplistic. Uh, emergency brake is attached to the transmission so I just need to disconnect the drive shaft from the flange. Um, the clutch and brake pedals part of the transmission too so I've got the linkage rod to the rear brakes, the brake light switch, speedometer cable, and then I can just unbolt this and uh, slide it out. This is uh, this is going to be a piece of cake. The exhaust may, be, may give me some fits. It looks pretty close, but I'll figure it out when I get there. Well, I had an issue with the video when I took this out, so I'm going to go through it how I did it. Get the floorboards out. I think I got that on there. Got it cover off. You can see right there is the pause that actuate the throw out bearing you're going to need to cut the safety wire off and it connects two nuts you need to take a screwdriver and a block of wood and pry this as far forward as you can at the top that paw take those bolts completely out come over here uh, take off the clutch adjuster. There's a keyway in there and a key. You need to pop that out. Slide the brake pedal, clutch pedal off. And then, good luck. You have to slide the shaft out without marring the shaft up. And you have to get these off if they're rusted on there, which is going to be an absolute pain. Um, but it can be done. So you've got that off. Then you pull this shaft out. Then you can take a long punch or, uh, or an extension. And around the other side over here is the other post uh, for, the, for the throw out paw. You pound that out. Now this is where it gets kind of tricky. You need to back the transmission away about two inches. So get some longer bolts, two or three longer bolts to put in there. Take your other bolts out, slide the transmission back, then you can grab the throw-out bearing paw and pull it out. Then you can get the tranny out. This is the most complicated way to put a transmission in and out that I've ever seen in my life. If there's another way, let me know. This is the way I did it, but I couldn't see another way to do it. <sighs> Good luck. Okay, I gotta take the rag joints off. Yes, I said rag joints, not U joints. I love this. That's how they did it back then. Um, you can see where somebody's been in here before and marked it, sold them back the same way. I'm gonna do the same thing. I need to mark this so it goes back in the same way. I don't want vibrations. I don't want it to be my fault if there's a vibration. That took like how many seconds? And then I've got some cotter pins. Ooh, that's a big long one there. It's like a crazy hair. So I get these cotter pins to take out. I can unbolt this and get the drive shaft out of the way. This drive shaft does not have a slip yoke. I only unbolted the three that hold it to the rag joint in the front and then the rear 
and the axle's tilted like this. So I pointed an arrow so that I can get it back to where it needs to be, and then I'm going to just tap this up. And then I'll get it pulled out that way. Pretty straightforward. This is, uh, got a lock ring on it. And I'm thinking somebody put this on aftermarket because if you can see, there's holes drilled in here for uh, safety wire. And they must not have had the shorter nuts and put the lock ring on. But this is a easy, you just bend that tab back down and then you can uh, get the nut off. I'm going to have this flywheel off in a second. I'm going to say I need a flywheel. I want not ring gear, flywheel. And I'm going to say why flywheel. Because this doesn't have a ring gear. It's cast in. It's parent metal. Boy, something took that out. That's the only bad spot. Oh, there's another bad spot on it too. Wow. Hey, let's get this measured up and see if I can find a flywheel for it. A little time to start today. It's project. No, I'm not reaching for a beer. I had to take the flywheel to a local machine shop because my tool rust wouldn't fit under it. Got this chilling in here right now. Uh, it's been in here overnight. And the ring gear is in the oven in the house. I am going to take that over to the house because I think the cold will dissipate slower than the heat will. And um, the tolerances are 20 thousandths um, uh, clamp. So hopefully the ring beer, gear being in the oven around 500 degrees for the last hour and a half will have expanded it and this will have shrunk it enough to where it should just fall right on. Okay, let's see how this goes. It should fall on there. It should fall right on there. Come on. Might need a little bit of persuasion. There we go. It's setting up. You can see the heat sucking the frost right out of this flywheel. I seated it right on the bottom, or where the where the where the machine groove is. That easy. Piece of cake. How many people pay good money to have? Uh, ring gears put on their uh flywheel the ring gear wasn't cheap that was 250 uh what do you find uh ring gears from a 25 maxwell you take what you can i consider it a good price considering to buy a brand new flywheel it'd be 50 or 200 bucks 250 if not more and uh, they charged me 60 bucks to machine it there you go this car's gonna be back on the road easy peasy well i'm gonna let this warm back up Neighbors having a Halloween party tonight. We have to run into town to go get some stuff. I have my uh, ground blind set up on a side of a hill, so I want to get a real chair instead of one of those stupid ones that you uh, take to your kids' ball games and jam your fat ass into. What I want has telescoping legs so I can adjust for the hill. And it's got a little swivel. So with all that rant out of the way... Um, turned out really good i'm really happy with it it locked on you saw that almost immediately and um that's it for today uh, today is the day i start putting this back together i've cleaned it up real well with an old brake clean in here um, you don't need grease and dirt in between the materials you're putting together i also uh <coughs> clean the flywheel too so when i took this apart i marked where the lines were in the flywheel, which I was assuming could be top dead center. Uh, and I, I marked the hole. Oh, get my workout today. I marked the hole to the bolt. Oh. Okay. And then 
you remember there was a lock ring in here, but I don't think that lock ring was in here from the factory because it looks like it was wire nutted. Uh, these are the tabs that were bent up. You can see this is this is slated for multiple use. So pop that on there. Now, if you ever get in a situation where these don't want to go on all the way, this is not one of them, but you can grab a socket bigger than a stud and just tap it. And that'll seat this properly. Uh, nuts. You can put them back on the same way if you want. I guess it doesn't matter. I'm looking for the friction marks. Um, you can see that side doesn't have any. That does. So I'm just going to put them back on the way they came. So now for torque, this is where things get tricky. You're not going to find a service manual for these. If you do, you're really lucky. So I just snug it up a little bit with the impact wrench. And just based on experience, I'm going to start at 60 foot pounds okay so now we've got some rotating going on which is not a real big deal uh, there's a couple ways you can handle this there I'm going to handle it with a clamp You just got to put some friction on it. Don't over tighten this. You do not want to crack the doll housing. You just want to put enough friction in to stop it from turning. Now I'm going to step torque this. Maybe take it up to 30 or 40 first all the way around. I don't want to side load this or torque one side tight too hard and then it not want to flat now now I'm starting to yeah 60 is where it needs to be you don't want to need any more than that you're going to yield the bolt bolt I'm not feeling the bolt yield but I'm feeling it getting close to yield yeah and you do not want to yield your bolts at least not in this situation. Walk that up there again. Yeah, I went over. I only went over a foot pound. I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. Okay. I'm going to say that flywheel is torque. Get that out of there. Now for the tabs. You just come in here, the screwdriver if you can, and bend these up. It's being a pain in it, but is what it's being. There you go. Get it up tight against the flat. On the nut. And that will stop any rotation that you might incur. But I, I don't think we're going to have a problem with that. Okay. Let me go do the other what thing. What I'm going to do now is where I was hitting on this the screwdriver. And eventually I used a chisel to fold that over. I'm just going to come in with a stone and hit that edge just in case where I was using the flywheel as a leverage point. It, it made a rise on the flywheel. I don't need that uh, interfering with the friction plate. 
and there were no rises, but only took a second. Now this uh, friction plate is like a woven asbestos thing. I'm just going to come in, because there's a little bit of oil in here. I'm just going to come in and scuff it up a little bit to get any of the oil that was on it off of it. I don't want to get too crazy with this. You will be able to see where you can see it. it's polished in there from being used. But I'm not really taking any material off of this at all. I'm just freshening it up a little bit here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to both sides. Now before I, uh, I put the friction disc on, I've never seen these with uh, brass bushings this thin before. Usually these are needle bearings in here. Now, that pocket gets hollow in there. And the trick is, so I get some molly grease, um, the high temp molly. I just want to get some into this hole right here. You don't want to put too much in it because if you overload it, then what's going to happen is when you go to try to put the, try to put the, input shaft in, it's going to hydro lock itself and it'll actually start to push the bushing out. So I just got a little bit in there right now, nothing crazy. So now I'll go ahead and put the friction disc in. When I took this out, I had marked it out because it is directional. Somebody had already marked flywheel side on the other side, which is good. Now, this is a unique clutch. I've never seen one like this before. And I'll explain why the farther we get into this. So what you see coming up. Well, that was a good catch with the bike. Note to self. Put the top one in first next time, huh? Ah, I lost my train of thought here. Oh, what you see coming out of the, the liquid is very clean. I cleaned off the threads. Be careful not to cross thread these. That'll barely hold it on there. And this could have been another eighth inch bigger. With these old cars, you never know if you have something that's stock in here or not. For example, our Nash has a friction plate plates out of a 20 something John Deere tractor. Because you're not going to find friction plates for these things anywhere. And when I say this is a weird design, um, normally what you would do is put the pressure plate on and tighten it up and line this is up. But there's fingers on here that uh, that are that are it's a it's an odd setup. It's they're kind of in the center of the throwout bearing. So I've got to kind of think about how I'm going to put this together. I've backed the torque down on these to 40, and the reason why is these have lock washers on them, and there is absolutely no load on these the way there is on the flywheel. And I'm thinking, yep, yep, 40 is the magic number. We're getting close to the, the fun part. Well, this is my dilemma. As when I was saying, I've never seen a clutch like this before. These arms here and this clutch ride on this side of the throw out bearing. And the clutch pedal throw 
you can see is in there too. With the clutch assembled, I can't get these arms on the inside. But I need to align the friction plate up with the center of the pilot bearing hole so that I can get the input shaft into it. It, it it's normal clutches aren't like this. Normally I would just be bolting uh, the clutch and friction plate up using an alignment tool, bingo bango, then put the transmission in. So what I think I'm gonna have to do on this one is I think I have to take a safety wire out and get the clutch pedal throw out. And when I assemble the clutch, have the throw out bearing as part of the clutch assembly. That is the route I'm gonna take on this. It seems to be the easiest route because the route I took taking this apart, I, th I didn't think it was right, but never seen this before, you gotta learn. Well, since I was experiencing a learning curve uh, taking this apart, I ended up taking the clutch apart to get the transmission out because the throwout bearing was stuck in here. So which means I need to put the clutch back together. Uh, I marked it, how it came apart. I'm basically going to uh, take this whole assembly over. You can see there's pockets for the springs to fit in on both sides here. And I'm going to put it in my press and uh, compress the springs and get the nuts back onto this. Okay, now I'm going to start bringing it down. I just want to get it on far enough to get the adjuster nuts on because I don't want the press to push on to the paws here. Now I marked where these came off and I marked uh, how many turns I had on each one of them. And I'm going to start each one of them at three turns. That'll be enough to um, to hold it on when I take the spring pressure off from the or the pressure off from the press. See that one's cross threading, so make sure that uh, I get nothing on there. I'll probably have to run a wire brush through it. And I did mark where to start turning to three. Uh, I marked the location where it came off of the, the, um, the bolt here, or the paw arm. One, two, See, this one's a little, this one's tight. I've got to figure out what's going on with this one. Yeah, I got it in there now. I just ran a tap through it. I'm going to relieve the spring pressure on this. And the paw, the paws went back down. See, if I would have continued to push down on this, with this metal in between here, it would have bent the paws. So you got to be paying attention to what you're doing here. So let me get this out and get the throw out bearing in there because the throw out bearing needs to go in before well maybe not i might be able to weasel it in there um let me give it a try what i got going on here is i want to torque these and the bolts felt yielded already so i pulled them out and i could clearly tell by looking at them that they were hourglass shaped it just wasn't one of them they all were so they didn't use the best materials back then. They didn't have a real good grading um, set up in the system we have now. I've gone ahead and uh, got some grade eight bolts and I've ordered a helicoil kit for it with um, an inch engagement. I'm going to drill and tap every one of these holes and I'm going to um, helicoil them and I'll put longer grade eight bolts in and that should fix the problem that I had with the bolts not wanting to torque. Well, before I put all this together, I wanted to check the gear engagement 
kind of hard to see, but I'm going to have perfect gear engagement. I'll have about an eighth inch um, clearance from the Bendix tooth, the flywheel tooth from the bottoming out. Uh, the new ring gear has got a bevel on it, and the Bendix has got a bevel on it, so this should engage a lot easier. I've got, got to go back and pop the tabs off of the off of the uh, Gila coils. And then I also decided I didn't like the thread engagement, so I ordered uh, Gila coils with uh, about 7H thread engagement versus the standard coil. I've got grade 8 bolts that I'm going to be putting in. I went through and rebuilt the clutch. I just have to put the lock springs on. These are the way these adjusters work is when you turn them clockwise, it pulls the friction plate or the plate um, away from the friction plate. So this is going to be fine tuning. Um, when I took it apart, there was about 12 turns to take each one of them off. 13 turns is max. So when I put this together, I'm going to have it at 13 and then I'll dial it in, uh, adjust the clutch when I get it uh, back together. I've got a snake this in there. Um, when I bolt this, uh, this pressure plate down, these tabs will come up. And what I'll, uh, I think what I'll do is I'll bolt them down unevenly so one of the tabs will be up higher than the other. Then I can snake this in. But I want to show you something. This is a, this is an oil light bushing, and it appears to have a, either a graphite or a mild. Uh, mild uh, cast iron or steel in there. But I'm going to show you, they didn't have uh, grease technology uh, the way we have it now. Uh, what they did, which you're not going to believe this, is the input shaft is hollow right here and it goes into the transmission. So you have your transmission fluid constantly leaking to keep your throw out bearing lubed and part of the procedure to clean the clutch was to pull this cover off after so many miles or so amount of time and to pour kerosene down in it and when you pour the kerosene down in it the thought process was is it would clean the transmission fluid off of the friction plate mind-boggling Way they did things back then. Time to put the pressure plate in. I'll point out these tabs not only hold the friction plate in, there's tabs on the pressure plate too. So you gotta get them lined up. There we go. Grade 8 bolts now. I think the problem is alleviated that I had. And what I found with this plate is over time, these uh, springs have kind of twisted a little bit. So the holes don't want to line up exactly. So I'm going to get what bolts I can started in this. Ah, and so far, it looks like just one. I'll be able to get them lined up. If I can get two lined up, yeah, the plate is twisted because of those springs. So what I'm going to do is snug this up just a little bit so it doesn't want to fall. And then I'm going to grab my alignment tool and try to uh, tweak this plate into alignment. There, that one's going in. So I'm going to go through and get all the rest of them in. Some of this might be stack up. 
for when I re-drilled the holes for the um, helicoil. The, the bit may have went biased one way or the other. Um, it's really irrelevant as long as I get the bolts in and tight. Um, everything's going to be good. Okay, I don't have them snugged up, but I got them in. Believe it or not, my clutch alignment tool for my 99 F250 works for this. So I'm going to get the clutch alignment tool in here. I'm going to wiggle it around a little bit. Uh, I'm getting, I got that bolt just a little too tight. It's kind of binding it a little bit. There we go. I just kind of waddle. I look for the friction plate material hanging out pretty much the same distance on each side. But there's enough uh, slack in them spline gears to where it should allow it to come in. Just slightly snug it up. The clutch arms are starting to come out. Hopefully that gives me enough room to get that throw out bearing in there. See how it's coming out. Okay, I'm gonna switch over to uh, I'm gonna switch over to a ratchet. Okay, got everything in. Okay, I'm gonna take this to 20 foot pounds. Got the lock nuts on it, so a lock washer, so it should be all right. I don't want to get into an over torque situation. It should take more than 20 foot pounds just because. The helicoil is stainless steel, but there's no need. Just go back and make sure each one of them are snug. Okay. Now the throw out bearing. What I'm gonna do here is I'm going to loosen one of these up. But actually, what I need to do is I'll loosen these two up. And then I should be able to sneak this in here now. I don't want to force it, so I don't want to bend any of those tabs. There we go. Now I can tighten this back up, these back up. Like I said, I'm going to take them all the way to the bottom, and then uh, when I go to... Uh, adjust the clutch pedal and all that during final assembly. I'm also making sure that these tabs are riding on the center of the throwout bearing itself, which they were. When I reset this clutch, I took it apart. One of these tabs was bent. It was out and twisted. I'm not sure whether that happened over time or or assembly, I'm not too sure, or disassembly from before. But anyways, I got them all straight where they need to be. So now this is in, and I should be ready to start putting the transmission in. Getting into the home stretch here. Well, before I, uh, before I put this together, I want to show you what these tabs do. The throwout bearing is angled towards the driver's side of the car. This is down as far as it's gonna go. And if you watch, if I loosen this, it's moving the bearing. Look how far that one came up. So just a little bit of movement, just a little bit of movement with these, I mean like a quarter inch 
we'll move this tab down here a half inch. So I kind of got it eyeballed to where it's straight. So when I go to put the input shaft in, it'll uh, line up better. I want to put the lock springs in before I put the transmission in. Just because I don't want to have to fight it like I'm fighting it now. Huh? Come on, baby. There we go. These are pretty much a simple, simple deal. There you go. That way it allows you to adjust it. I mean, look at how much that's moving. And I'll hold it into place. Maybe get off that spring. Now this is the time to do this. Not when it's in the not when the transmission's in. Now I've put a little molly grease here and on the input shaft. I want to get the I want to get the input shaft lined up with the pilot bearing first. I like to make sure that it's a neutral also. So that if I need to spin the input shaft, I can do it with the output shaft. Okay, I have to lower this a little bit because emergency brakes hit in the cross member. Okay. Here. Okay, now I can come up. It's still, it's still wanting to hit it, so I've got to tilt the back of the transmission down a little bit so I can get the input shaft lined up first. Almost. back a ways. That's about as far as I got on that travel. Okay, now I got it going in the throw out bearing so I can lift it up a little bit. Oh, I've got like a... It's easy to see how that fork would have got bent. Okay. I'm going to waste your time looking at a wobbling tranny. Let me get this uh, close the way in. Well, this is where I would uh, normally put guide pins in this if it was a bigger transmission. This one's pretty light, so I think I should be able to work it in. I'm working the back of the tail shaft right now. Yeah. What I'm trying to do is get the pilot shaft or the, the input shaft lined up with the pilot bushing. Uh, it's proven to be a little bit of a struggle. I, uh, I put the stabilizing jacks on the car just because I was going to be jerking this around a bit. So I don't want to force it. So let me uh, let me get a mirror, stick it up above. I want to see what's going on through the access panel with the pilot or with the throw. Up. Well, every now and then you get one that just doesn't want to go in. I've got the guide pins in now, just because get the transmission jack out of the way, and I've got the vice grips on there to stop the transmission from sliding off the guide pin. So I can feel the throw out bearing. It's not interfering. So my interference is coming with the alignment of the input to the pilot bearing. I think what I need to do is get it backed up, get the back of the transmission pushed up a little bit and wiggle it in and forward. Let's give it a Okay, try. I got it now. What I'm doing is I'm walking it in with uh, longer bolts. Um, eventually going to shorter bolts. It's going right in. 
So I'm thinking I had some uh, some friction with my with my guide pins, and then the the tranny jack wasn't doing me any favors. So time to get some shorter bolts and walk this thing out. I got going on now. Blue Loctite on the bolts. I want this focus. Mm, must have dirt on it. So I just feel a little bit better having blue Loctite on these. Probably not needed, but that's what I'm going to do. Give them a snug down. And then uh, I'm going to come back right now and uh, torque these to 30 newton or 30 foot pounds. Before I start uh, putting this back together, I'm going to adjust the paws here. And the way that I'm going to do that is I've marked them 1 dot, 2 dot, 3 dot. I have slid the throw out bearing as far back as it's going to go. I'm going to find which one's touching it first, and then which ones are not touching it. And then I am going to adjust the pause until each one of them is touching exactly at the same time. And another thing I'm going to look for is this gap right there between the center, the center of... Uh, the throw out bearing in the paw. I do not want the paw touching that. If I need to tweak it a little bit, I'll come in with a screwdriver and just give it a little nudge to get it off of that center uh, section. And the way I'm going to adjust these is um, start pulling these out. And uh, it, it sounds simple, probably is simple, but it's just going to take time because I, I got to get out, rotate, get out, rotate. This would be easier with two people. Okay, it all makes sense to me now. What I ended up doing was backing each one of these off one full turn and then rotating it around, getting um, the one that was in farthest to touch the throw out bearing first. And then I dialed in the other two. And that back off one turn gave me what I needed. You'd be amazed at what three clicks would do. Three clicks would move that paw an eighth of an inch if not more so now what i'm going to do is i need to put the other part of the throw out bearing that controls uh controls the throw out bearing to the pedal in uh, that shaft right there goes to the pedals and this is just a slave shaft uh, what i've done is i've marked where the hole is on the shaft on the end so that when I slide it in, I can make sure that I've got it facing up, that when I go to put the, the lock dogs in there, um, it'll be easier for me because I don't want to mess around trying to spin this thing around uh, while it's going in. I just want it to go in right the first time. Well, just ran into a situation. For me to get this... Uh, throw lever in there there's not enough room to get it lined up so I'm gonna have to put um, pull the transmission back about three inches I'll put them on the studs again pull it back about three inches and then that should give me enough room to finagle this thing into place <sighs> they never made things easy back then well, that was the trick I slid it back that far went right in I uh, loosely set the posts in. I'll tighten the transmission back up, get the posts uh, in, and then recheck the pause on the, on the throw out bearing, but I think it should be fine. Boy, I'm going to tell you, they weren't worried about assembly time when they did this. <sighs> I've got to get these lock bolts or lock dogs or whatever you want to call them down into those slots or into that hole right there and the way that's got to be done you can see it right there is you got to pry the fork 
that way so that you've got clearance for the bolt. And also you have to have that hole, the threaded hole, lined up with the hole in the shaft so the point will go in it. It doesn't allow you to start threading it in um, unless you're over the hole in the shaft. Whew, what a pain this is. I literally an hour to get that one bolt in. Hopefully the next bolt will go in a little bit quicker and we need to start getting moving on with this thing. Well, I got the forks in. I literally had to put the wrench down like this and twist it in quarter turn so I could get both of them tight. You see the rig I'm using to hold the fork forward on that. So now the fun th the fun part, get the safety wire back in. Wow, that took forever. Okay. Let's see what you missed. I got the safety wire on there. You can kind of see it right there. Keyways back on. This is an adjuster for the clutch pedal, but I'm noticing the clutch pedal is hitting the wires going to the battery. So after I get all this buttoned up and the brake, uh, brake rod back on, I'll readjust the pedal so that I'll bring it up slightly so it doesn't pinch the, um, the, wire, the wires going to the battery as much. Uh, let's see what else is going on here. That's about it. I, uh, I've got a bracket that I need to put on over here. I can't remember how I took it off, so that's why I'm waiting to put those bolts in right there. Um, I got to get up underneath it and do it. <sighs> Home stretch. Yeah, famous last words. Okay, all that's left. Get the drive shaft in, the battery in. <sighs> Start it up, make sure it's all right. I got some fluids to top off. I want to change the engine oil first. Um, what else do I got going on? I have. The brake light switch all hooked up. Everything's going. Like I said, I may have to adjust that. I'm not getting... I get a lot of, a lot of travel before I got clutch engagement. But it all depends on if it's hitting this wire or not. If I want to get involved in changing or adjusting that. Eh, not too bad. So the uh, checking this, look at that. It's the backlash. Isn't that pretty? For a car this old to have backlash like that? I think it's better than my truck. Yeah, let's get this drive shaft. Well, I'm putting uh, 10,000 cotter pins in now that hold all this together. And let me tell you something. You don't have a chance in hell of getting that rig joint in unless you lift up that rear axle. It ain't gonna happen. So six more cotter pins. Get the battery in and uh, see if I can get this thing started. Last time I was doing this, I says, man, I should put the battery on the charger. This says 2002 on it. It should be all right. Right? This should be all right, right? Oh, my God. It's always something. Charger. Yeah, I got the charger on it. It's deader than a doornail. We I mean, leave just char charger on it for about an hour. If that doesn't do it, then I'll uh, take the battery out of my tractor and put it in here and see if that can uh, get it running. Only something. Let me see if I can just crank start this thing for now. Okay, keep fingers crossed. I still think the gas is crap. No key for this one. You just turn that lever and put it on that button. It's alive.
The gas is crap in this. I got a drain to take. Ugh. Okay. Anybody who's got an old car, you have to use recreational fuel and marine grade stable 360. I don't care what anybody says, that works. And the rec fuel will work. It'll help stop the varnishing. And you got to drive these things at least once a year. Let me get this thing jacked up and get this fuel out of here. Well, I had a feeling I was going to check it anyways. Transmission was a pint low. It was down to about here. So I'll check the diff in the radiator next. And then uh, I'm going to take this for a test drive. Stop raining and snowing enough to where I won't get the car dirty. Well, I got it. I got some fine tuning to do. I want to adjust this clutch pedal a little bit because it's hitting uh, the lines going to the battery or the cables going to the battery. So I don't really have any vibrations. I've got really nothing too crazy going on with the clutch. Uh, the reason it ground a little bit is it's straight cut gear and also I can't get the clutch all the way down because the battery cables are in the way. I didn't put them there. That's all I'm saying. So I got the clutch or in the in the flywheel and all that. That job's done. And I have fixed the fuel problem. It was a combination between the carburetor and the fuel pump. All that seems to be taken care of now. Oh, and the steering is really tight. I got to figure out what's going on with the steering. I'm afraid to get into it. <laughs> 